Hi there, welcome to our Big Ideas Shortcut. I'm Willie Ali. Today, one of the headline overseas acts from the recent Festival of Dangerous Ideas at the Sydney Opera House. Mike Daisy is being called the master storyteller by the New York Times for his groundbreaking monologues, which weave together autobiography, gonzo journalism, and unscripted inspiration. In this challenging address called Sleeping with the Enemy, Daisy makes a full frontal assault against corporations and their dominance over our lives. Working for big companies, he argues, is akin to being a collaborator in Vichy France. So shun the bankers and down with the lawyers too. There would not be corporations if there were not people to run them, were not people to work them. The corporation is so inhuman because it is almost non-existent without the people to motivate it. There is no corporation at all. A corporation is a compact between the people who are inside of it. In its oldest form, the original corporations had charters that said what a corporation was for. You would only make a corporation if you were trying to incorporate to do something, some project larger than any one individual. And then when you came together to make that project realized, it would also, in that charter, have the terms of dissolution. Because once you were done, whatever that project was, of course, you would dissolve that corporation because you wouldn't just leave something like that lying around. Because if you did that, you can imagine a world where those corporations would just grow. Because what, what else would they do if they had no objective and no ending? They would just grow. They would become very different than us, alien to us, because they would have no arc to their days. Everyone in this room is going to die. You are. I assure you. And so will I. And thank God for that, because that gift of death is what defines us. That gift is what makes us human. The arc of our days ensures that we will live a life that is measured. Corporations do not die, and they have no conception of death. They just go on and on and on and on, and because there is no arc to them, there's nothing human in them. There's nothing that can stop them in that sense. Corporations would not exist without us, without you. You are complicit. I am complicit. We are all complicit. We make this possible. We are in a hell of our own making. We live in here and we make it day after day after day. We live in this landscape. So the question becomes, what are we going to do? What are we actually going to do? Because that's where these talks break down, isn't it? We rant and rave over the state of things. We talk about the landscape as we see it. And then when we're done, we sigh and we return to the world as it was. We whisper to ourselves, I don't know, I'd like to do something, but it's so hard to do anything. It'd be so much easier if someone else did something. I don't know. I don't even know what I could do. Guy is so annoying. Jesus. I want to go get another cup of coffee. I hear you, I hear you. The truth is that you need a new metaphor. You need a new landscape. You need to stop pretending that you are free because every day you believe that you are free. You suffer from terrible guilt. Why do you live in such a world where you have so much but have done so little? F that noise. You need to understand that you are not free. You need to understand that you live in an occupied country. And your country is occupied by corporations. And like any occupied country, there are lessons that we can draw from. There's a history of the duty of resistance. You need to look back to Vichy France. You need to look back to what people do when they are occupied. They resist, and they resist in a thousand different little ways. Resistance needs to become our religion. If you want to do this, if you want to be on the side of humanity, you need to resist. And in occupied France, not everyone was a sexy member of some resistant fighter, although, of course, in the years that followed, after the war was won, everybody was in the resistance, weren't they? Like, once it turned sexy, then everybody was in the resistance doing something. But you know that's not true, right? You know that most people are not in the resistance. You know that many of you out there in the darkness 
aren't in the resistance now. I mean, I'm glad you came to this talk. And I'm sure in your hearts you'd like to resist. But when you weigh yourself, I think you'll find yourself wanting. I know I find myself wanting. I know there's so much more I could do. There's so many things I could do. But there are concrete steps we can definitely take. The biggest, I think, is to understand that commoditization is a deep, deep problem. We often think of ourselves as consumers. Even in our resistance, we'll say to ourselves, what could I buy? What's the right thing I could buy? I want to spend my money somewhere where it, it's effective. I want, to, I want to only spend my money on things that are the right things to buy. That. I don't care. I don't care what you're buying. I care about what you do. What do you do? Because there are people out there in the darkness right now, today, whom I am looking out at, who work at corporations. You are part of the problem. You are absolutely part of the problem. And don't fucking lie to yourself and tell yourself that you're not. Don't leave here tittering, thinking how you, it's not you. And you do a lot of nice things and you give money to some great charities. It's wonderful. No, fuck you. You're part of the problem. You are. And if you're serious about resistance, you need to start today and figure out how you're going to stop being part of the problem. People don't have to work for and inside of corporations. They don't have to. People can find things to do. And the more people who do not work inside a corporate context, the better it is for humanity. And there are levels like anything. Each of you is going to be the arbiter of your own existence. I mean, it's not like I'm going to judge you. You're just going to have yourself to judge you in the night when you lie in your bed. You know what the truth is. I do what I can do. In my own life, for instance, I freelance everywhere. I work with corporations all the time. I'm constantly sucking that corporate cock. But I do everything I can not to be chained up. I do everything I can to suck as little cock as possible. And when I can, I try to pick the really nice cock. I do what I can. And it's important to me, for instance, uh, years ago, for tax purposes, people were always trying to get me to incorporate. I'm never going to incorporate. The last thing I'm going to do is make another corporation. It's important because every corporation that's made is a limited liability corporation. Every single one that's created limits liability. You understand that abstraction is the central tool of corporatism. Once you create layers of abstraction, once human beings are not responsible for the things that are done inside that company, that is how things start to go wrong. If you have a job, if you do something, you need to actually be able to explain what you do in a single sentence. If you cannot explain what you do in a single sentence, you are probably a corporate whore. You know that's true, don't you? Because the systems get more and more complicated. If you're actually doing something, you should be able to explain it really quickly. Like, my job is, I talk to people. You have different skills, different skills and gifts, all of you. But you can all work. You can all do things in this society. I know you can. Human beings are amazing. And what an amazing world it would be if more of us actually had jobs that did something, that looked and fought and scrambled to look for something in their lives they could actually do and then made those spaces for themselves and then did those things. It's possible. It is possible. Corporations need us to be their priests and their soldiers. They need us to shuffle the papers back and forth. They need us to have day jobs. They exploit us that way. If we leave, that is one less person that they have. And each new free person is a new free voice to actually speak about the shape of the world. And there are some careers that bear special responsibility. If you're a banker, you have a lot to answer for. It's an abstract job. It's a highly abstract job. And the odds are you have not done a single thing with your f***ing life. Odds are you have taken money and used it to make more money. And you should be ashamed of yourself that you live on this earth, that you breathe this air. You had all this time and you did f*** all with it. You don't have to do that, though. You could actually do something. I've never met a banker yet 
who wasn't smart enough to know that they actually had other gifts because the world is filled with gifted humans and no one is gifted at banking. That's a sham and a delusion. That's a perversion where you take the gifts you did have to do something worthwhile with your time and you piss them out on the ground so you could grab money from other people. It's bullshit. If you know bankers, you need to know this in your heart. You need to know it, and you need to distance yourself from them. Lawyers are close behind. <laughs> it is possible for a lawyer to use the law to work toward justice. It is possible. I have almost never seen it in my life, but it is possible. And if you are a lawyer, ooh, you're walking right on that knife's edge, aren't you? You're right there, ready to fall right into the devil's pocket because honestly honestly are you actually using your skills to work toward justice are you day after day i want to hear about your pro bono work i don't want to hear about what you do on the side i want to hear about what you do what your job is what you've dedicated your life to because all of you in this culture like my own there's a strong streak of puritanism here we are what we do what you choose to do with your life defines you that is where you resist corporatism they need us to work for them if you have friends who are lawyers that work in a corporate context, you need to quit them. You need to shun them. You need to drop them. Social shaming is a very powerful impulse. They need to know the truth and they need to be discarded. And that shame increases and we inculcate it in our children there will be less in the next generation. All of the lawyers and bankers will have to breed with each other and they will have stunted children <laughs> who are the only ones who will go on to be more bankers and lawyers and eventually the whole f***ing breed will die out entirely. Mike Daisy sticking it to the corporation at the Festival of Dangerous Ideas at the Opera House. That's all for today, but tune in at the same time each week here on News24 for another Big Ideas.